Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be talking about Edmondson's run on Black Widow. Let's do this. My name is Giovanni Menendez. Welcome to A Week in Geekdom. Today we're going to be talking about Nathan Edmondson's Marvel Now run of Black Widow. This was 20 issues, right? Yeah, 20 issues across three skinny Marvel trades. And this was a ton of fun. I don't know if I've told you guys on this channel, but if I had to pick a favorite Avenger, I would have it would have to be a tie between Hawkeye and Black Widow. There's something about them being the underdogs compared to characters like Hulk, Thor, Captain America, all that stuff. There's something about how uh, low-level street hero uh, they go about their way uh, that appeals to me, you know? I like that. Especially Black Widow. She has a very complicated past. Not only is she an Avenger, she worked uh, for S.H.I.E.L.D., ex-KGB assassin, She's had a very complex, interesting uh, life in the Marvel Universe, and Edmondson does a really cool job of bringing you into her mindset, but in a fresh, reader-friendly kind of way. You can pick this up at any point in time, read it, and enjoy it. You don't need to know anything about previous runs. You don't have to go back and read <laughs> material from the 70s and 80s. None of that stuff. You can go in cold and still enjoy a quality story about a fantastic multi-layered character that is very much suffering from her past and is in this book trying to seek atonement for those sins, taking deadly missions, going after criminals and, and scumbags of the earth and all that stuff. But she needs money for that. And one of the gags that I really enjoyed was her uh, attorney basically telling her, uh, you know, we still need money. I know you want to give that cash away, but we still need money to fund the operation. So I thought that was pretty uh, cool. It sort of gave you an insider's perspective on the stuff that normally doesn't get written in a superhero comic. So when we get stuff like this, I really enjoy it. This is one of my favorite aspects of these characters that they're not, uh, you know, it's not like a grander than life adventure. It's more grounded on Earth. Uh, and Black Widow uh, represents that. She is sort of an enigma because like I mentioned, she has a very multi-layered past. Uh, you don't really know her. She's always putting on a, a, an act towards others. She's a loner by nature, and she's gone through so much, which, you know, has shaped the way she's gone about business, from being an assassin to being a world-class hero with the Avengers, all that stuff. So I find that if you can dissect what makes her tick, what uh, her insecurities are, and her thoughts on, you know, uh, how she did all those things and is trying in her own way to uh, atone for all of that. I think in your, I think you're going to strike a home run. And what better way than to get the fabulous, fantastic Phil Noto, one of my favorite comic book artists of all time. I love his artwork so much. And I, I'm sorry, to me, like, where, where's that? Here, I can show this without spoiling anything. Here, the back cover. One of my favorite pictures, uh, drawings of Natasha Romanoff. What I appreciate about this run with Phil is that he is able to express so much through different scenarios in the story. Whether it's an action-packed scene that is very, you know, a lot of pastel colors, or very uh, watercolory, and it's very, uh, it's, it, it almost seems like you're lucid dreaming of sorts. And then when you go into flashback scenes, the art is much more refined and defined on her character uh, expressions and all that stuff. So, depending on where the story takes place, uh, it, it looks gorgeous. Even if it's on the Tantra, on uh, Cuba, uh, New York, wherever it may be, there's always that special color palette, that special treatment to that area, which makes the scenery, which makes the moment an issue 
a lot more compelling and that is because of the art team. So when the story first begins, like I said earlier, she's seeking atonement and eventually these bad guys start showing up called, uh, at first she, they're mentioning like the Hammer of God and eventually you learn of an organization, a secret organization called Chaos and they're behind sort of like your world government conspiracies and influencing uh, major players behind the scenes. And as the name implies, you're sort of creating this chaotic nature that is uh, sort of like this unseen force. And how do you do that? How do you go against this conspiracy that by all means does not exist? S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't have a record on it. They don't know what's going on. The governments just uh, see uh, Black Widow doing all these crazy things and they're even questioning like is she like the the Avenger that we know or is she a bad uh, character? Those exploits get explored in this book. The one thing I really liked about having a villain like this that it's more like a conspiracy theory or a, a political thriller if you will is that it gives a character like Natasha who is a spy by nature to do her best and you know infiltrate and do covert missions a lot of cameos from different superheroes that get involved in uh, the Black Widow's journey to defeat chaos or find uh, the people behind it she's gonna cross path with uh, characters like the Winter Soldier, X-23, Punisher, etc etc and the book itself really innate in its nature it feels very self-contained but at the same time it sort of retains that slice of life aspect even though it's a dangerous political thriller it, it starts from a small uh, case but each time you're going through a different case a different scenario it, there's just this lingering uh, villain or mastermind behind it but it always has that flavor of peeking into this character's life one of the aspects that I liked about chaos is that uh, the villains per se is that they're not really there you know it's a it's a conspiracy you have to read on to find out why I'm saying that, but the idea of a mysterious force influencing things has a lot to do with the character of Natasha herself from growing up with the whole Red Room thing and being controlled to do things and, and being persuaded to act a certain way. Later on with a mask that she puts on to appease her uh, co-workers, whether it be Avengers or S.H.I.E.L.D. members or whatever, because she is experiencing this uh, loneliness and this solitary lifestyle of being a spy and working on dangerous missions you always have to uh, keep your poker face on so the character even though she appreciates and values her friends and all of these new connections that she has she still feels a sort of emptiness inside uh, and I thought Edmondson really did a good job of exploring these themes in a nice, fresh, and uh, reader-friendly way that anybody who is interested in the character of Black Widow can pick up and enjoy. Certainly the book is stellar looking. I just love and adore the way he draws uh, Natasha. She's very stern, serious, deadly, but at the same time sad, compassionate, and beautiful. Uh, it's just a, a work of art, this book, in my honest opinion. I, I really enjoyed it. Plus the shifting of the uh, art, whether it be in a sunny day, a night scene, or in the fall, or in the past. It, every scene has a distinct look, even though it's by Noto. I liked it very much. I think you'll have a fun time. It's only 20 issues, 3 trades. It shouldn't take you long to read all of it and enjoy a fantastic look at one of Marvel's coolest underrated characters. Like, I know, she's famous, I get it. She's been in movies, she's been in video games, a lot of people love the character, I do too, but you gotta admit, compared to other superheroes, Black Widow's not at the top of the list for some people. It is for me, I love that character so much, and I am very happy that Edmondson wrote these 20 issues and explored a different aspect of the character, sort of this melancholic view of somebody asking for forgiveness by doing the very things that led her down that path, you know, repeating those same actions, but for a different outcome. Because at the end of the day, it's still violent and it's still, uh, 
covert assassination stuff but in a very different perspective and had a state of being compared to her origin story where she was trained as an assassin so i thought that was really cool i'd love this run so much i hope it one day it gets an oversized hardcover i would love to get that in oversized format Guys, what did you think of Edmondson's Marvel Now Black Widow run? Let me know in the comments section below. Let me know what's your favorite Black Widow storyline. I kind of do want to get to the uh, uh, Wade and Sabney um, run because I haven't read that and I really want to. As always, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing to A Week in Geekdom. You are the absolute best. I thank you so much. As always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next video.